Today we're going to take an in-depth look at a Techstone 6-switch light switch panel for your truck, Jeep, or even your boat. These are nice uh, Carling clone switches, which are waterproof. Um, these switches normally cost like anywhere from you know eight to ten dollars by themselves, and you got six of them in there. So even for just the price of those switches, you're getting a really good deal. Plus you get a voltmeter. The only reason it's uh, refreshing, kind of looks like it's uh, scrolling like that, is because of the refresh rate of the, the camera. I think it's at, set at 30 frames per second right now. Um, that does appear solid. It is within 0.1 volts of my uh, Craftsman voltmeter, so I think it's pretty accurate there. Under this hood, we've got two uh, USB charging ports, and then we've got a standard cigarette lighter. And it is pretty big. It's uh, I haven't really found a place to mount it yet. Um, I'm just I've got it down here in my little uh, pop-out tray. I would like to see them make a square version that is a uh, you know three and three quarters wide by three and a half tall. Um, I would love to pop that out and pop uh, something about half that size in there with just the cigarette lighter and the USB and maybe three of these switches. Um, that would be nice. Uh, but for now, we're, we're working with this thing. Um, so you've got a switch for LED light bar, side lights, spotlight, roof lights, zombie lights. You could use that for whatever you want. Uh, you have some sort of siren or something going on. And then you've got your uh, driving lights. So six nice hot heavy duty switches there for you to work with. And uh, let's take a look at the back here. So they are pre-wired and they do give you two power leads. One set of power leads feeds the switch bank and one feeds the, the meter bank and the USB ports. So you could just as easily uh, break each one of these uh, switches off and have their own fuse on each one. Um, or you could come in with a hardcore wire and put a little fuse on each one of these if you wanted to. Um, but if you're using it for LED lights, you'll probably be okay with just one fuse. And this is the way I like to do it. Um, you want to come off your ignition with a single, uh, single lead there. Let me get the light here. And this one goes straight to my power on with ignition wire. And I've got it down, coming down here, and I've got some pigtails off. And that's just coming in there with a butt connector to that pigtail. Um, and that feeds the switch bank there. You are going to want to fuse it. I've got a 20 amp or 30 amp fuse there. I would recommend at least 30 amps for that many switches. If you're going to break it out into one or two uh, fuse groups, uh, you could easily go with smaller fuses. Um, or if you're going to be powering incandescent lights or like halogen lights, you're definitely going to want to uh, break up some of those switches into different switch outputs. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put this thing to the test here. Let's test the USB ports. They do light up nice and bright. Let me turn the ISO back down here. In fact, we'll turn it way down so you can see. So just normal off is just a single light, and then you turn it on, and it's got a nice bright thing to tell you that it's on like so. I think those switches work really well. And since they are Carling clone switches, um, they're probably going to do the job even if they get wet. Uh, but they are good quality rocker switches like that. So I've got a constant current load resistor here. We're going to go ahead and test the USB ports out. See if I can get this all in one shot here. So we are at 5.01 volts, 1.43 amps. Get this to focus here. There we go. So let's go ahead and turn that up. Do this one handed. Go ahead and turn it as far up as we can. So this constant current load resistor, what it does is it draws a constant load. You set it at a, an amp rating and it draws constantly. Most USB, USB devices like your phones, tablets, anything else you're going to charge, uh, the charging amperage varies and it never, almost never gets up to 2 amps. So we are actually in the 2 amp port there. Let's go ahead and plug that into the 1 amp port.
and again we're getting a full two and a half amps at 4.9 second volts that is more than you're probably ever going to plug into that say you plug into both ports and you're pulling over an amp on each port you're going to be fine most normal usb devices don't pull over an amp and usually when they do it's not for very long it's usually when the battery is completely dead so that usb port pair works really well i'm i'm happy with that and both ports are going to put out over two amps now it's kind of a weird thing you know you think you've got a, a one amp port and a two amp port um, your device is only going to suck as many amps as it wants. Don't worry about which port you're plugging, plugging into. Most devices, even if they're labeled uh, differently, uh, you can plug into either, and they're both going to provide as many amps as your device wants. So, uh, so far, it looks really good. You know, the voltage reading is within 0.1 volts of my multimeter. Uh, USB ports pass the test. Uh, cigarette lighter, can't go wrong there. Nice switches. Um, I like it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 5 out of 5. I can't find anything wrong with it. The only thing I can find wrong with it is the fact that I can't put a place to put it because it's a nice, heavy-duty, big switch bank. Um, really good set of switches there. So make sure you hit yes for found this review helpful. Hit the thumbs up button on the YouTube video and subscribe to the YouTube channel.